my name is Tony. Hold on. Hey, how you doing, bro? Hello. Well, I'm going to talk about some real maintenance. Real maintenance? Yeah, you need a real clean, oil, all that stuff. So you can't go out and text me and spit out when you're falling apart. Fish in this area a lot. You run across a lot of salt water. The salt water. Every time you leave and get home, you need to clean those rods off. Then you get all the salt sand. I don't know. Especially if you have like old wheels that are not sealed. And then some of the newer wheels. If you're buying um, the ones that they have specific ones that are sealed, they are not sealed. Clean the salt out of Get the bearings and all that, bro. Yeah, keep from corroding and all that. And uh, for aesthetics, a lot of your drills have to clip on them. Yeah, just like the rods. And if you don't keep the sand and salt off them, it'll eat that stuff. It'll eat it right up. It'll eat it right up. It'll eat it right up. Two good products here. Uh, for the old time, I prefer the non clean bedroom. Yeah. But, you know, you do what you see. You do the same thing. Oh, you may have missed. Here's another part of what you would consider rod maintenance, even though people don't actually consider rod maintenance, is your line. Your line. <laughs> you got to keep that salt and stuff off your hands. That's why I tell people to, to rinse, your, rinse your rods off every time you come back in. Get all that salt out of your line and everything. You got products like this. Yeah, this is, this is it's a little, um, uh, you can look at the turkey Yeah. Real light, but it'll sink down, it'll soak into the line, get down in the corner, you can rinse it off, it'll put all that excess salt and sand right out. You know, if you're fishing hard like we do sometimes, you'll notice when you get back home, or the next time you're ready to take the line out, you look at it like, I just put this line up there, but now it's kind of like, yeah, oh, I use that orange braided line. You yeah. can see that fade really quick. It fades really quick. Because that, if you use a braided, 90% of braided line has a clear coat on it. Yeah. And that salt and sand cuts it right off. Cuts it right off. It's always good to rinse that off. Get some type of conditioner. But like I said, I use a little bit of a little bit of dawn and a spray bottle of water, shake it up, get in there. And you don't have to take it offline now, you just spray it on the outside. Just spray it on the outside. Another item that's very good which for protecting your rod is a good rod saw. A lot, a lot of people, when, when I, I fish a lot of piers, a lot of surf, I also fish um, in boats and I see people show up and their rods look old, but I know that you just bought the rod. But when you're traveling in your boat or in your truck and you got all the rods, you got like them clapping and stuff like that where you're chipping, chipping up the clear coat. If you got ceramic uh, guides, that clack, 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 constant clack, you'll chip them away, you'll find, you'll get to a fishing destination and find out one of your eyes or, or the insert came out. More than likely, it was clapping and you didn't get any light So a good rod sock is, is paramount. And for the price of these, and for the, for the price of these versus the price of that rod, this rod right here, it's not even a custom rod, and this is over $200. Wow. So, a $4, $5 item to protect you, it is just almost a no brainer. You know. And the same token, while we're protecting those rods, I suggest a nice little pouch. You don't have to be nothing fancy. Not like that. We, because we tie our rigs up every time, because of the length of our rods, I tell everybody go to pull the reel, put it inside, pull, pull it inside of one of your, a pouch like this. It'll keep it from being banged up. It'll keep it from you know scratches and all that stuff, which will keep it from the aesthetics, which is always going to be good. You just buy something, you want to keep it as new looking as possible. Now we'll get down to 
a little bit of a situation here that a lot that some people overlook. With every manufacturer, they have the different viscosity oils that they recommend for their product. Is that saying that any other oil is bad? No. I use real snot. Y'all have never seen that. Some of the best stuff on the market. But everyone markets something to maintain and keep their real food. You have a combination of grease, a degreaser, and an oil. You know what I'm saying? So you can, a lot of your bait cast pin have a certain thing on the side just to shoot oil. So you're over the road, some of the road, but I don't get to go inside. But it's going to be paramount that you use something. You know, you got everything from this to hot sauce to, you know, even Bass Pro has a, uh, their own version of a real loop. That's, that's Bass Pro's version of, of the same real loop. So it's always a product out there that you can use to lube. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going my real. Right. Okay. Now all that maintenance is going to culminate on the day that you got that citation or just a good fish period or just a fish period on your line. When you've taken care of it, taken care of your reel, your drag is working, everything's working, just the sheer enjoyment of catching that fish is going to be the reward for all your maintenance and everything. But this part here, we'll get to with different styles of fishing. A lot of people do in this area do a, a whole lot of surf fishing, or what they call shore fishing. Uh, piers. Piers is very big in this area. The average pier fisherman or surf fisherman is using there's various designs of the same item. You know, it's it, it, it the least common denominator is a bottom rig. Depending on where you're from, people call them down riggers, bottom rigs, uh, spot rigs, whatever. But anything that you're fishing on the bottom with, these they, they work good. They're, they're never failing on you. It's gonna be what you make. Different styles of weights would be determined by where you fish and, and the actual makeup of where you fish. If you're fishing a rocky bottom, certain weights you're not going to want to use. You want to use something that's going to slip through and keep getting hung up and stuff like that. At the same token, if you're fishing a real sandy bottom and you have a, a current you're gonna to want to stay with something that can hold. These these are Sputniks. They go in, they dig in. But when you're ready to pull it out and you put some pressure on it, they release and come right out. It's always good to have a little bit of everything in the tackle box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Clams work good too. Clam clam uh, Yeah, yeah. And I just touched on this. Pretty much with any kind of fishing, I say buy as much line as you can afford. Because this is going to be the only thing in between you catching, hooking, and landing that fish. So the last thing that you want to have is line that's cheap or already frayed up on your on your rod, and you never change it because. Either never, never thought about changing it or you was worried about the cost. Get the line, change it. When you start seeing it cracking up and you feeling it getting rough and the uh, coating getting chipped up, change the line. I found that I use braid a lot. Yeah. I gotta go for it. Uh, I don't ever use but a little bit of a foam uh, 300 yards. You know, yeah. Right. So I just take it all off, turn it around, and put it back on and bring it to this up. So I gotta go. <laughs> all right. 